If Georgia goes ahead with this foreign agent law, your country's going to join a club of nations which includes Belarus and Tajikistan, which have adopted similar laws. Uh, how does that make you feel as the country's president? Well, Georgia is certainly not going to adopt this law. If anything, it might be the members of the parliament, uh, but certainly not Georgia, certainly not the Georgian population, certainly not the Georgian president. I've expressed uh, the very day when uh, this law came forward, was initiated, that I was going to veto this uh, law. Uh, which clearly will be overthrown by the majority of the parliament if they so decide. Uh, but that is the expression of the will of the people uh, that want to be closer to the European Union. And we know uh, that at the time when we are this very uh, important juncture, when the decision will have in a few months to be taken by the European Union to grant us uh, the candidate status, that a law like that is a direct uh, obstacle to this uh, granting of the candidate status. And that's why the people are coming out on the streets, uh, because they know that just the fact of the law, and not necessarily the content, but the fact uh, is distancing us from the European Union, from our ambitions, aspirations. And we will not let that happen. And supposing it, it did happen, I mean, what would be the implications for civil society? Well, it's a, a, an attempt to control even more civil society uh, because it's clearly uh, aimed at registering more of the non-governmental organizations or anyone in this country uh, that is receiving uh, foreign grants in different uh, uh, occasions. And for whoever knows this country, we know that for the past 30 years, our democratic uh, construction has been supported by our European partners, American partners, and the different uh, aid organizations. So it's very clearly, it could involve anyone uh, in, in that. So it's, it's really a law uh, that uh, resembles very much to that uh, that has been adopted uh, in Russia and uh, in other countries. It's not a law for a democratic country. It's not a law for European country. I think that the government uh, has a last chance uh, to uh, really reconsider uh, that the Venice Commission is clearly say, going to say uh, that it's not acceptable. The population has said it's not acceptable. Our constitution says that it's not acceptable because our constitution imposes to all Georgian institutions, government, parliament, of course myself, to do everything that we can uh, to uh, make the European integration happen. So in that sense, this law is anti-constitutional. And that's what I've said, that's what I will repeat, and that's what the Georgian population is saying by demonstrating on the streets. So why is it then, Madam President, that the ruling party, the Georgian Dream Party, deems this law to be necessary? That's a question you have to ask to them, clearly. We do not see, I do not see any reason, and I've said so. It comes out from nowhere. Uh, the Georgian population does not seem to understand why there is such a law. And the only explanation is that it's a law that comes at the worst moment uh, for our European ambitions. So does that mean uh, that its only objective is to distract us from this ambition? I'm asking the question I don't want to answer, because my answer is that of the Georgian population. We do not want this law. We want the European Union. We want to fulfill the 12 recommendations. And I want to tell the Georgian governmental authorities that it's no use to uh, use lip service to talk about European Union integration and uh, their wish to join the European Union uh, if, in act, they're adopting such a law. That will contradict all the declarations that they have made. So they have to take into account the will of the people, the mandate they have received, because this government, as myself uh, and the majority, we have been elected uh, on this uh, program to join the European Union to facilitate the uh, Euro-Atlantic integration. There has never been another mandate given by the Georgian population. And we are due to obey to the Georgian population.
And uh, I mean, you know, I can't help thinking, listening to you and, and, and doing my research today. I mean, all of this really smacks of Russian interference. Uh, do you think that's a, a bridge too far? Well, Russia is never too far. It's occupying 20% of our territory. Uh, it has been uh, attacking and aggressing Georgia on and on throughout the two and a half centuries of our uh, close history. Uh, and so that's a uh, temptation of Russia all the time to try to impose its will. Maybe this uh, temptation is reinforced because they are losing the war in Ukraine and they want to see a success somewhere else. But I don't think that we should be trying to uh, see through what Russia wants or doesn't want to do because Russia now is getting uh, weaker. I think the whole uh, Europe and America has understood really what we knew uh, beforehand that what is the real nature of Russia uh, and what we have to do is just to reinforce our past, to accelerate our past together with our Ukrainian and Moldovan friends towards the European Union. That's the only answer uh, to whatever Russia would like to do. Um, one of the stories we covered last year on this channel was the crossing by many Russian men uh, over the border into your country in order to avoid the draft in Russia. And I'm, at the time, there were questions, was it a wise move to accept them? Because not many things happen by chance in, in President Putin's Russia. Uh, so I want to ask you, is there a chance that this influx of Russians could perhaps pose some sort of a threat to national security? Oh, we can always, we have many threats. And again, the main threat is that we have two military bases on the two occupied territories uh, that Russia is holding. Uh, so we do not need really to be looking for other threats. For the time being, these Russians that have come in the country, uh, there have not been any major incident. Uh, so I think that that's a very wise attitude of the Georgian population uh, to be tolerant and less proven otherwise, uh, and to continue on its path. That's what we have done uh, for all these decades. It's not to uh, try to second guess what Russia is trying to do, but ourselves to continue on our path. And that is Europe. And that's where we have to be fully supported by our European partners. We need them today more than ever their strategic decision to give to grant candidate status to Georgia is really a strategic decision that will have to be taken for the Georgian population, including, if necessary, against their government. OK, we're nearly out of time. Just one last question, if, if you will. Uh, for the record, going back to the foreign agents law, as it's been dubbed, you're going to stop this and you can stop this law. I can put my veto. I cannot stop it if a majority in the parliament uh, overthrows my veto, which they're probably going to do. Uh, but that's counting be, uh, without the voice of the people, without the support of the international community. I'm sure that in the end we will overcome. Okay, well, thank you very much.